Welcome to Inside the Indians, your source for insider information on the tribe. Stay with us as we bring you the latest about the players, managers, and people behind the scenes at Victory Field. Now here's your host, the longtime broadcast voice of the Indians, Howard Kelman. Hi everybody, and welcome to Inside the Indians. Miguel Perez played for the Indians, was a coach for the Indians, and now is the manager of the Indianapolis Indians. We'll be back to talk to Miguel after these messages. Indianapolis Indians is our guest. He played with the Indians. He also was a coach with the Indians in 2016. Miguel, it's great to have you back and welcome to Indianapolis again. Howard, thank you very much. Uh, you know, uh, uh, let me start with this. You are one of the few people that call me Paris, which is great. That's that's how that's that's how you know I'm Miguel Perez. So I'm I'm so happy, so glad that that. Uh, um, you are one of the few people that, which is great. So I'm so excited to, so excited to be back. To be honest, uh, this has always been one of my favorite cities. Uh, when I was a player, obviously when I was a coach, um, I'm I'm so excited to be back. It's a new new challenge for me. Uh, I'm ready to embrace it. I'm ready to, uh, um, you know, get those guys uh, uh, my best and and put them in great situation. Uh, on their careers. Before we talk about the team and other things, tell us about growing up in Venezuela. Did you play other sports besides baseball? Or was it just baseball? Well, baseball has been always my main sport. Uh, I did a little bit of volleyball uh, in school, basketball, but it wasn't it wasn't as good. It wasn't that good. So, uh, but I've been always a baseball guy. You know, uh, uh, five years old, my mom was taking me to to the field. Uh, at the beginning, I wasn't, I wasn't a part of it, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, my dad keep, you know, pushing me, encouraged me to, to go. And here I am, man. Um, you know, I don't want to say how many th 30 plus years later I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely terrific. And you've been managing for a while. You've been managing now for several years for the Pirates. And last year you were in double A out to talk about, uh, your managerial career so far? Yeah, uh, so my first year was in 2017. I went I went to Bristol, Bristol, uh, Tennessee. That was my first year as a manager. In 17 and 18, I went there. Um, in 19, I went to uh, Low A, Greensboro, North Carolina. And, and obviously, 20, we know what happened. But last year, I, uh, you know, I had the fortune to go uh, to Altoona. Um, you know, I, I, similar similar than here. You know, I went in. I went to Altoona for a couple of years as a player, and then I coached there uh, in 2015 with for Tom Prince, and then I came over here uh, in 16. Um, you know, it was a fun year last year. Like uh, like I say, it was a, a different challenge, as you know, going from uh, lower levels to double A. You know, it, it, you know the, the the level of commitment and the challenge it gets higher. But uh, you know, we had a great year, man. We had a, uh, I had the fortune to be with Gary Green, which is one of my, you know, one of my mentors, one of my guys. Is is the best guy that, that you want to be around. Uh, there's a lot of baseball there. There's respect. Uh, so it, it was it was a great summer. That's absolutely terrific. Now you had a lot of good young players there in Altoona, and some of them, like O'Neill Cruz and Ramsey Contreras, are going to be here this year. Yes. Uh, you know, interesting group, man. Last year is a uh, majority of the group that I had last year, or that we had last year, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to have the group this year. Um, just like you say, Cruz and Ramsey are part of it. Uh, Castro, Rodolfo Castro is also part of it. Um, Mason Martin, uh, G1 Bay, um, Cal Mitchell and Jigba, uh, Smith and Jigba. So it's, it's pretty good. It's a similar group that I had last year. Uh, with that being said, it, it looks like we're going to have a fun year this year. Yeah, we have a lot of good young players. The Pirates have traded for some, have 
signed and drafted some, signed some from Latin American countries. But when you get a player like O'Neill Cruz, he has the potential to be a terrific, and I mean a terrific major league player. Oh man, you're talking about game changer? O'Neill Cruz. O'Neill Cruz. O'Neill, uh, I've been I've been playing this game for for uh, enough to see a lot of things. I've been coaching now and have seen players coming through the system at the higher level or lower level, but uh, uh, O'Neill Cruz, I haven't seen I haven't seen those often you know it, it was it was fun it was it was oh it was so so excited to see to watch him playing and to be on the field to be next to him to have the fortune to uh, uh to have a, a good relationship with him um and you know it is it, one of those guys that is going to game that is going to change the game in, in one swing in, in you know in one action he will, he will change the game and the Pirates will have to make a decision with him. He wants to stay at shortstop. There's also some talk he could play the outfield. And while versatility is good with a player of his magnitude, I think it's got to be one or the other. And they'll make the decision, I would think, this year. Man, you know, uh, I don't know. It's just, it, it's, they, 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 they're talking about it, but they think that they, the Pirates, this, especially this group, they want, the, the versatility of players is is value, and and not only on O'Neill Cruz. We're trying to, yeah, Bay is going to be playing some infield and outfield as well. Uh, we have uh, multiple players that are going to try in different positions. So uh, on O'Neill Cruz is nothing that have to be defined other than than being, uh, uh, you know, have some vers uh, versatility because that that's going to help him to to get to. To, to the big leagues. We'll have more with Miguel Perez. This is Inside the Indies. Miguel Perez, the new manager of the Indianapolis Indians, is our guest on Inside the Indians. And Miguel, tell us about Ramsey Contreras. We saw him make one start. He was acquired in a trade with the Yankees in the Jameson Tyone trade, and he's got a great arm. Well, it, that is another guy that is excited to watch on the mound. Uh, last year, uh, with this new uh, um, rotation, with this new dynamic that we go six-man rotation, so he 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 will he was pitching on Tuesdays. Uh, so you know we make a little joke about Taco Tuesday, all the stuff. Well, for me it was Rossi Tuesday because it, it was one of my favorite days uh, of the week, just to you know have the pleasure to to watch him on the mound because it, it was it was it is impressive. It is impressive to watch him uh, how he how he uh, um, how he go about his business off the mound. So. That's another interesting guy, man. Like I say, it's going to be, uh, hopefully, uh, we don't see him much because that's the whole, you know, that's the whole idea. That's the goal for, for them and for, and for us. But uh, what we see, what we're going to about to see, it's going to be fun. Now, we had a five-man rotation here for the most part last year. What do you think you'll go with this season with the Indianapolis Indians, a six-man or a five-man rotation? We're still working on it, but it uh, looks like we, we, we are leaning to go six main rotations. Uh, that's going to be, as of right now, that's, that's, that's going to be our, our dynamic this year. Uh, we also going to be uh, uh, using openers. We're going to be using piggybacks and, all, and, 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 you know, that's the different dynamic with the Pirates this year. And that's the way the game has changed, not only with the Pirates, but all organizations using an openers and using using an opener and using many more relief pitchers than you used to use years ago. Starters don't go as long. That's right. Uh, you know, I, as you know, uh, my chops numbers, are, you know, are dictating a lot of those things. So, um, sure, like we, we, we go in that direction as well. Was there anybody who had a big influence on you and during your playing days, did you say, you know, I want to become a manager someday? You know what? Uh, I, I my first year, I coached for that was my so I 
my last year playing was in 13. So my 14, Michael Ryan was my first manager. And, and we're talking about a guy who is organized. Uh, that's Michael Ryan. And then the, the year after, Mr. Prince, man. Tom Prince is, is something else. Uh, it definitely was one of, one of my best year uh, um, in baseball in general. Be, because the way how he went about it, the way how, you know, he poured a lot of me. Like, he would sit me, he would send me, you know, uh, uh, down and, and 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 start talking about different different ways to do things, uh, how approach to players, and and then I came here, and I coached for Dean Trainer. You know, different styles, different uh, ways to do things. So uh, I just had, you know, I made a little of, a little bit of a, of a mix of all those three guys. So, uh, but definitely Tom Prince is 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 the top. He's on the well, top. Tom. Tom Prince is a former catcher, as are you. And I really think that catchers are special people. And you guys have an advantage because when you become managers, you've worked with pitching staffs throughout your playing days. Sure. Uh, you know what? And I always say, uh, Howard, that the, the, we have the VIP seat of the game. You know, we, we are right there. And and if I have to compare the catcher with with – Somebody else, I would say the conductor of the orchestra. You know, if you see the conductor, and I always keep, you know, I say, the, I've been saying this for years. Uh, the way how the conductor goes is the way how the orchestra is going to play. Uh, and, and the quality of, you know, the sounds is, is better. So it's the same with the catcher. Uh, we see a lot. Uh, we have everybody in front of us. And, and the guy who, who project energy behind the plate, that's how the team is going to play. And, and you know, it, along with that, you know, we develop the, the, you know, get to know personalities, get to know people, go out on the mound. Sometimes you don't have to say anything to the pitcher. Sometimes you have to say whatever. But, uh, yeah, I mean, catchers, definitely I agree. Uh, so that's why Tom Prince is one of my top. Do you ever say to yourself when it's 100 degrees and you're catching, back during your playing days, and it's so hot, and you got that equipment on, and those seven guys, the infielders and outfielders, they're just standing there. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, especially with the, with the gear on and, 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 and everything. Um, my f Let me go back when, you know, my first year in Florida, but back in 2001, I... Uh, I pass out. My first game, I pass out wow. down to Fort Myers in the sixth wow. inning. <laughs> it was one hundred and five. Wow. But yeah, and, and I'm from Venezuela. You know, I shouldn't, you shouldn't, and which is hot all year round. But uh, yes, I mean, when you're back there, it's hot, and you see outfielders just. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. Everybody. Well, know. they're trying too, but they don't have the job you have. We'll have more with Miguel Perez on Inside the Indian. Miguel Perez, the new manager of the Indianapolis Indians, is our guest on Inside the Indians. And Miguel... You got to the big leagues as a player with the Cincinnati Reds. You weren't there that long, but getting to the big leagues is so special. Tell us about that. Um, probably one of my, uh, the, the best moment in my life, besides my, the, when, when my daughter was born, um, I still remember that like it was yesterday. I still remember Rick, Rick Sweet calling me to the office and asking me if I had a suit. Uh, if I and I was about, I was assuming that I was going back to Venezuela, and I told Rick, I said, Rick, I'm going to Venezuela. It's, it's 100 degrees there. I'm, you want me to use suit there? So he goes, <laughs> How do you know you go to Venezuela? Uh, so that was that was um, yeah, that was one of my my uh, biggest moments in my career. Um, just like you say, I wasn't there long, but um, and I never went back. And that has been one of my things that I always talk in my mind when I. Because I knew I was going to become a coach at some point, and 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 here I am in AAA, have the you know uh, the the opportunity to tell someone that that is going to the big leagues for first time, or or someone that has been fighting for years to get back to the big leagues, or, or 
you know, it, it's a lot of, there's a lot of stories in this room right here. There's different stories. Who knows what the story is, you know? Um, so I'm so glad that I had to experience that for that short period of time because that, that taught me a lot. So That's great. Now, do you manage differently? Now you're managing in AAA. You were in AA last year. You've also managed in A-ball. Do you manage differently at a different level? You know, not really. Uh, I would say uh, everything starts from the clubhouse and everything starts from the coaching staff office. If we, if, we, if we have a good relationship and we, I, we are cohesive and, and, and you know, we get along pretty good, that's going to project to the players. And next thing, the clubhouse is clean it's, it, and it's, it's transparent, it's, it's fun. And, and eventually it's going to show up on the field. Uh, you know, I'm a laid back guy, but I'm also making sure that I, I hold people accountable on, on respecting the game and, how to, and, and the, the, the values and the principle of the game. And I was raised that way. And I don't think, you know, the game has changed a little bit. There is, there is some principle that it needs to stay in the game. And that's one of my things. Miguel, you mentioned Gary Green earlier, who will be your bench coach. By the way, he played for the Indianapolis Indians in 1993 and played in the big leagues, too. Tell us about the other coaches on your staff. Um, so, Dan Meyer, I, I, was, I was here when he was here. He came here for a little bit in 2011. Oh, he's right. my coach. Um, it's been great, man. And, and we had a little, you know, we... we uh, wouldn't spend much time during spring training because you know how it is, but uh, it's been great so far. Uh, Eric Monson is another baseball guy. Uh, he spent he spent a, a little a little bit in the big leagues, so he's another baseball guy and he's willing to, you know, to learn uh, different stuff and new stuff. And, and Brady Con Brady Conan is the I would say the newest uh, in our in our group, but he's. He's, he's awesome. He's, he's great. He's solid. He's all about the game. Um, and what else? Uh, and obviously, Gary Green, which is, the, you know, uh, Bay, call him Grandpa. He's, 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 our, he's, our, uh, he's our father here. Uh, Gary's a terrific guy and was an excellent infielder. He had really great hands great hands and he was the Pirates infield coordinator for about 10 years prior to that he managed are you going to coach third base which you did in 2016 part of the season here I will I will I will at least for the first part of the season at least for um you know for a little for a little bit I will I I, I love to be on third base I I love to be pitch by pitch on on the field on the ground and anticipate game that's that's uh that's Part of my development too. I mean, we are all develop, you know, develop. Um, and and obviously, you know, having Gary Green on the bench is, you know, it it, it is another level. You know, um, I we can trust him. I mean, whatever he wants, whatever he, whatever happens in the clubhouse. Oh, I'm sorry, in the dugout, I'm good with that because because it's Gary Green. And one change for you now as a manager. Pitchers no longer are batting, so that in the National League games there'll be a DH like there are in the American League games. Where here in AAA with the Indianapolis Indians, when we played a National League team, the pitchers would bat. That's the end of pitchers batting. DH employed all the time. Yeah, uh, I, I just you know we, we it was there for so so long that you know it, it, it's going to be different for sure. But also when we play minor leagues, when we play against uh, American League teams, we always use DH. Right. Uh, it is it is good. It is great because that gives an opportunity to a position player guy to have a bat and to to know is a little bit more freedom to kind of play with the lineup a little bit, especially with this group. We're gonna it's gonna be a challenge as as you know as you see on the list on the roster the names that we have. So it will give an uh, it will give an opportunity to a guy. Uh, to be in the lineup. As we talked about, you've played here. You've been a coach here. What do you think of Victory Field? Victory Field, man. It's uh, like I say, this is from back in '09 when I came here for first time. Um, it, it is great, the whole city, but the whole city and and big Victory Field. 
I, I still remember, not to bring that back, but uh, for July, I mean, it was like, it's always like 14, 15,000 people. It's great to, you know, to, to play in that environment, not only on 4th of July, but uh, it's always good, you know, to have that support, to feel that support, especially what we went through, in a, we, we've been through a lot in the last couple of years with the, uh, you know, with the COVID situation is, it, it, there is not a better place to be right now than it is here because I know, or we know that we're gonna have support. Well said, Miguel, thank you so much and best of luck managing the Indianapolis Indians this season. Howard, thank you very much. Great to see you again. Looking forward to see you in person. Okay, we'll do that. This is Inside the Indies. Yes, Miguel Perez, the new manager of the Indianapolis Indians. The Indians continue their homestand at Victory Field this weekend. See you next week on Inside the Indians.